This is Amy X for Radio Free, KeyWest.com. Today is Thursday, August, 26, 2010 Day 129 of the BP Oil Spill. The stories today coming out of the Gulf include residents reporting the continued use of core exit, broken pipes in the wells blown out preventer and delays in testing results by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration due to the fact that the agency is now sending samples to a laboratory in Poland for analysis. The information continues to be convoluted which seems to be the preferred methodology of the organizations overseeing the Deepwater Horizon nightmare. If Tuesday's Florida election had been held 90 years ago, women would not have been seen at the polls. It was on this day on August 26, 1920, when the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified, guaranteeing women the right to vote. In the immortal words of David Bowie's suffragette city, wham bam, thank you ma'am. More than 200 men and women packed themselves into a church in Bahama Village last evening to discuss the recent wave of gay-related assaults. They were there to represent Key West's gay population which is estimated to make up about 20% of the Key West citizenry of 26,000. The big question is, were these people involved in physical altercations because they were gay or would the beatings occurred even if they were heterosexual? Key West authorities explained that a hate crime is difficult to define and prosecute and that most cases would take a jury to decide. Key West police have released the names of those involved in the horrific Key West first day of school accident that sent a total of seven people to the hospital. The Key West students involved were all children of the tightly knit conch community. Xavier Harvey Nelson Jamado was the 16-year-old driver. The students have been identified as 14-year-old Elizabeth Caballero and Gabby Abrio, 15-year-old Marila Barroso, Joel Porter, and Jenna Gonzalez. The passenger of the vehicle struck by the pickup truck, Crystal Candelario, was also treated at an area hospital. One student was airlifted to Miami for their injuries but remains unidentified. Yesterday August 25th marked the anniversary of the death author of Truman Capote, who was of a part of Key West's colorful past. Truman is the source of one of modern history's greatest retorts when he and fellow author Tennessee Williams, were drinking in a crowded Key West bar. A woman approached the duo and asked Capote to autograph her navel with an eyebrow pencil. Her drunken jealous husband upped the ante when he pulled out his penis and asked the question, how do you like to autograph this? According to the legend, Truman paused and said, Well, I don't know if I can autograph it, but perhaps I could initial it. There will be a day-long event to remember the life of the green parrot owner Jim Bean who passed away earlier this month. The gathering will begin at noon Sunday, August 29th with a New Orleans-style procession march, down to Fort Zachary with the ultimate send-off for Jim planned. After that bands will take the stage all day till the early morning hours. In the Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap Department In 1815 the island of Key West was granted to Juan Pablo Salas, a St. Augustine Royal Navy officer, by the governor of Florida, Juan de Estrado. Florida at the time was still a portion of Spain. The transaction was payment for services rendered to the government. Salas then turned around and sold Key West to two different people. One man traded Juan Pablo, his trusty boat, worth $575, while another man John Simonton, ponied up $2,000 cash while in a bar in Havana, Cuba. It took Congress in 1822, to straighten out who the rifle owner was. It turned out to be Simonton and the rest is history. Beginning on Monday, August 30, 2010, the Key West Daily News will be published Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will be referred to as the Key West Daily News, Evening Edition, 6 in the City. This is Amy X casting off.